I need to work on some things. It has definitely been um, attitude and motivation. Hey you guys, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a September homeschool update. So if you guys are interested in hearing everything that has happened for us in the month of September, then go ahead and stay tuned for today's video. So if any of you guys are new here to my channel, again, my name is Brittany. I have a nine, three and a one year old and I'm in my second year of homeschooling, you guys. Um, this year has definitely started off pretty rocky for me, but um, it has been nothing but God. <laughs> and some of the prayers from you guys and, and just the messages that you guys have sent me that has really encouraged me and just covered my home and covered my homeschool. And I really, truly feel blessed just to really be sharing with you that um, my homeschool has definitely um, turned around. Uh, if you guys aren't new here, I did make an update within my first three weeks of homeschool, just really sharing with you guys um, my struggles and the things that has happened within my first three weeks of homeschooling in my second year and just all the love that you guys poured you know, to me and the emails, um, they really mean a lot. And you know, I'm really grateful for uh, just you guys and just having this sense of community and the love that you guys shared with me in that video and um it truly meant a lot to me and i just want to thank all of you guys for that so um yeah so you guys let's go ahead and get into this update i really want to highlight our book highlights our curriculum highlights i want to talk about anything that really comes to me as far as September um, in our homeschool. I really wanna try to highlight it and share it with you guys. Last school year in my first um, year of homeschooling, I really wish I would have documented month by month my homeschooling journey because I feel like right now I would really like to look back at that. So I definitely wanna make it a part to bring you guys um, these like monthly updates uh just because i know it will help somebody out there watching these updates and also too it always helps me to be able to look back and see where i started where i came from and it really gives me encouragement to keep moving forward so uh yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and get straight into our books that we've read so far within our first quarter of our homeschool because we did complete our first eight weeks and i'm so proud of us so the first book that we started off our school year with was the trump of the the Swan. This was a continuation from Summer and it definitely was a great book. Uh, this is a classic. Anything from E.B. White I definitely would recommend to you guys. So Trump of the Swan, it was beautiful. I definitely recommend it. We went straight into our second read aloud which was A Long Walk to Water. We're actually doing a Africa unit study from uh, the Heritage Mom, it's called Amazing Africa. It has definitely truly been a blessing in our homeschool. And I wanted to add this read aloud, A Long Walk to Water, in addition to all of the resources that she provides for the Amazing Africa unit study. And this has definitely been a beautiful book. This was one of the highlights that my daughter said for this school year. This book follows a journey of Nala and Saba in uh, Sudan, Africa, and it just follows their struggles, how they overcome them. And I really feel like um, this book definitely shed a lot of light in my daughter. My daughter is nine, she'll be 10 in December, and she, um, it definitely uh, impacted her a lot. I definitely would say this book is definitely for middle school, possibly high school because of the content and things like that in this book. But if you feel like your student is mature, I definitely would say this is definitely a good read. Um, it really opened her, her eyes to just um, the basic needs of others and just the things that she has here and um, just for her to be really grateful for um, just our life here in America and the things that she doesn't have to deal with. Um, it really showed these two kids persevere and throughout difficulties and the challenges that life faced them and she really enjoyed following these uh, two people Nyla and Salva and she really enjoyed seeing how they persevere through everything and that life brought to them and um, yeah she definitely enjoyed this. I definitely say this is a must read for uh, any student. Um, again, like I said, I really feel like this is for uh, more of a mature audience. I would definitely tell you as a mom to read this book before you present it to anyone in elementary school, possibly younger than fifth grade. I definitely would say to um, pre-read it, but it definitely was a good, powerful book, at least in my opinion. So yeah. 
So going from such a strong nonfiction story, I wanted to give us something a little bit light <laughs> after that. So right now we are actually reading PAX as our fall read aloud. It's definitely been amazing. Um, we've been really enjoying it. We're in chapter 13, so we're almost halfway through this book. I definitely know in our second quarter, we'll probably uh, be finished this book in the next two weeks, but it's definitely been a really, really good uh, told story about PAX and Peter and their adventure together. Uh, Sarah Pennypacker is really a great author and I've really been enjoying it. I've been enjoying listening to this book on audible version because um, last year I read all of our read alouds and I was really tired of just always reading along with all the other reading that we were doing. So this year I gave myself a break and we are actually listening to this one and definitely has been really, really enjoyable um, listening and, you know, cuddling on the couch. And um, yeah, I definitely see why a lot of homeschooling moms love audible books. So uh, yeah, we've definitely been enjoying them here in our homeschool. Now, as far as curriculum highlights and things like that, one of my main curriculum highlights has definitely been Amazing Africa. Um, I know I talk about it all the time, but I really have been enjoying um, that unit study in our home. We're about halfway done with that unit study. We will be done with it before Thanksgiving, and I'm really going to be sad when we finish exploring all of these countries within Africa, but it definitely has been amazing. I have been learning things that I didn't know even as an adult, so it's really been a learning experience for me and for my daughter. So um, yeah, definitely that has been one of our curriculum highlights. Another one of our curriculum highlights has definitely been Fix It Grammar. Um, you guys, if you see my curriculum changes video um, and I talked about all the changes that I went through with my curriculum, those was like one of my main struggles, uh, just picking the wrong pick curriculum uh, for the start of the school year. I picked curriculum that was too teacher intensive, especially for the, um, the uh, place in life that I'm at right now. I do have two toddlers. I have a one and a three year old that still demand a lot from me, but I still need to be able to carve out that time to give to my daughter. So picking curriculum that's not too teacher intensive is really important to me. And I feel like that was where a lot of my struggles uh, happen at the beginning of our school year. Uh, just picking the wrong things that didn't fit our season of life but one thing I did pick that just went well from the beginning was fix it grammar my daughter actually went from being able to identify parts of speech about 50% to about 90% after just finishing the first eight weeks of fix it grammar so um, they are actually only editing one sentence a day but I really feel like just these simple grammar lessons have definitely strengthened my daughter's uh, grammar skills and learning her parts of speech um, and this has definitely been a highlight for me and for my homeschool. Now, as far as our second quarter goals, we are going to be putting Fix It Grammar down just the end or for our second quarter. And it's really not because of anything negative. It's actually because of something positive. Um, me and my husband decided uh, because my daughter loves writing and she enjoys writing so much that we are going to um, let her do a um, writing course next school year. And I looked into a lot and I really think I'm going to go ahead and do IEW structure and style um, it's I think it's the first one It's a structure and style to really help her with those writing skills and let her hone in on them because writing is something that she just naturally enjoys and I really want to um, continuously allow her that time and that space to flourish that craft so um, yeah we are definitely going to uh, put her in IEW either January um, or next school year but right now it's looking like we're going to allow her to do it in January so I feel like by putting this on hold and letting her do fix it grammar with IEW it would definitely be um, a good compliment just because she will be doing more composition um, and I want her to have like those short grammar lessons with it so as far as um, another curriculum highlight I definitely have is Masterbooks. We went back to Masterbooks, you guys, and it definitely has been amazing. We're actually doing Masterbooks language lessons for 11 education level five, and it's been a beautiful fit for her. We did level three last year, and I jump skipped her to five. I really feel like last year we should have did four, um, but <laughs> I didn't, you know, um, I didn't make the switch when I should have, so I just jump skipped her. We went to five. It's been a perfect fit. It's been a perfect compliment. Um, I feel feel like she wants to do lesson after lesson because English is like the subject she loves the most and I'm so happy that I found something that she's able to do she's able to get it it's short it's sweet it's to the point and I can still give her that space to be able to do her creative writing and things that she likes to do as far as creative writing goes my daughter finished writing her first story and she actually illustrated her um, title and she actually made a what is this I guess her back 
cover of her first story that she's written here in our homeschool and it's been amazing seeing her go through this writing process writing her first story um i think this little story has 15 chapters in it and it's so amazing just watching her flourish in a craft that she loves and i'm so happy that i jumped the gun and made those curriculum changes in the beginning of our school year to allow my daughter that time and that space to be able to do something that she loves and she enjoys so i definitely will say that um I'm, I'm happy and I stand behind firmly uh, me just jumping a gun uh, early within our homeschool because ever since we switched and uh, we're doing the curriculum choices that we are doing, it definitely has been uh, beautiful. Our days um, just flow great and um, I feel like I'm really enjoying what homeschooling is meant to be and um, yeah, you guys. So those are our curriculum highlights. Now I want to talk about Bible. Um, this year we actually did something a little bit different for Bible. Um, we added in these Character Matters cards from September & Co. And you guys, these Character Matters cards have definitely been a great addition to our homeschool. Um, you guys, like, it's so crazy that I'm over here teaching my daughter characteristic traits and things like that. And um, me teaching her these things is really resonating with me as well. Like, if I want my daughter to um, pursue these characteristic traits, I have to be the example for her. So as we are going through them, I feel like I'm taking more from it possibly than she is at this very moment because mama bear you know i need to work on some things <laughs> and i need to really display um how how we are supposed to be here on this earth and how god wants us to be um and i really need to set that example for her so as we are going through these characteristic traits um not only am i giving this to her but i feel like this is a good reminder for me um to continuously show my daughters um examples of how he wants us to be especially in our homes when we can lose our patience pretty fast and things like that so these character matters cards have been beautiful I'm not too sure if we're going to go through all of these throughout the school year it would be really nice to be able to go through all of them but I'm really going to just take our time when it comes to character and character development but it definitely has been a beautiful addition in our homeschool Something else that we do for Bible is, is I teach my daughter Bible through our Sabbath school lessons. I go on Grace Link, on the Grace Link app, and I pull up her primary Sabbath school lesson, which is for ages seven through nine, and I just print off the lesson for the week. We go over that as well. Uh, something that we do daily in addition to her Sabbath school lesson is, is also this cute little devotion that I found on Amazon, and it's called How to Grow a courageous girl and this little mini devotional you guys has been so amazing in our homeschool these little devotionals are about five minutes they have a scripture verse and a prayer at the end of it and i really feel like um a lot of the things that they're touching on in this little devotional it really has been amazing and it's really age appropriate i would say like between ages 8 to 12 will be a good age for this little mini devotional i really feel like my daughter can do this on her own um and read it however i like to read it with her i like to talk about what the devotional says and things we can take from it and it's really been amazing this little 4.99 book from amazon um you guys it definitely has been a highlight now along with bible you guys i really want to thank my mom because she definitely always contributes to our homeschool and i'm so blessed to have her um she went to a christian bookstore uh sale and she was able to find me these beautiful um family book devotionals that I feel like we're definitely going to add in our second quarter. These books actually go over the Old Testament. So this first book right here uh, goes over Adam and Eve. This next book starts off with Abraham. This one talks about Jacob and then it ends with Joseph. So all of these books right here are all, all goes over the Old Testament. This is actually an older edition she found on sale and I'm so happy to have these beautiful devotional family books in our homeschool. And um, mom, if you're watching this, thank you again for these books, they're beautiful. I'm gonna try to insert you guys pictures and flip throughs of these devotional books. And if I can find the links below, I will definitely try to find the links to it um, as well for you guys if you're interested in um, these family devotionals. But uh, yeah. So you guys, as far as I should say like some challenges we faced this uh, quarter, um, other than like curriculum challenges, I will say it has definitely been um, attitude and motivation. My daughter, uh, Brielle, you know, typically when you have a student that um, 
loves English and, and writing. They typically don't like math and science. <laughs> My daughter loves science, but math, not so much. And it's just so crazy that she is really, really good at math. We are actually doing a Becca Arithmetic for, uh, for math. We did a Becca Arithmetic 3 last year, and um, she's good at it. I talked to her about the uh, whatever our new concept is that we're learning. I feel like she gets the concept right away. She does her problems. And when she's doing her work, um, she might get like one or two problems wrong within the lesson and um, I really feel like she's good at math for the most part she just doesn't like it she told me she just doesn't like all of the work that math you know that you have to do when it comes to math and you know I understand but you know I told her you know Brie we have to show up and we have to have a positive attitude um, <laughs> when it comes to eat subjects even the ones that we don't like so um, even though math is not her favorite subject She's really, really good at it, and I'm going to continuously motivate her. And my main motivation is really bribery, and I know that sounds bad. And how I do it is, it's pretty much I tell her, Brie, we're gonna do math before we get to our English and writing. So I always do math first, then we do our English and writing. So um, that has definitely been, um, it's definitely been a motivation for her to get done with her math so she can get to a subject that she loves a little bit more. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> um, as far as her uh, writing and goals that I do have for her writing for our next quarter is that I really want to um, start teaching my daughter um, more i guess editing skills when it comes to writing um we i really want us to focus more on grammar in particular i want us to work on like fragments and run on sentences i feel like within her writing coming up with the ideas outlining um coming up with her topic sentence and conclusion sentences and paragraph formation all those things come really natural to her but i feel like uh the grammatics and um things like that like forgetting to put a period at the end of her sentence and um things like that and uh, not breaking up sentences that needs to get broken up little things like that are things that we're going to focus on more when it comes to the rest of this quarter um, to get her prepared for that formal writing class because I definitely I definitely know she's going to do amazing in it I just want to make sure that we fine-tune these little teeny things when it comes to her writing skills and everything like that so um, again we are going to put aside fix the grammar we're going to focus on our um, master books language lessons for a living education we're going to do some oral grammar drills and I'm really going to um, work on those things with her to prepare her for um, this uh, IEW writing class She's really, really excited about it, and I'm excited uh, for her to be able to uh, work on something that she's really interested in. Too. I do want to teach her how to write persuasive paragraphs um, and expository paragraphs as well before she starts, so she can get into a different style of writing. She's really, really good at you know storytelling, personal narrative, things like that. But I do want to get her to be able to uh, do other forms of writing, and those are the two forms of writing that I do want to introduce to her um, this second quarter so um yeah so you guys um another life update that did happen to us in the month of september and it's you know you know it's really really sad for me to say this but you know i, I understand that this is just the cycle of life but um if you guys do follow me on instagram um you probably would have known that um i expressed to you that my grandmother um she passed away on um on september 2nd and it this month has, or this, these couple of months has really been hard, but, um, with my grandmother passing away, it definitely hit home and, um, you know, it definitely has been a hard season for me, um, going through grief and everything like that. My grandmother, you know, really had a, a powerful impact on my life and, um, like I can't express to you in this short video just how much she was there for me. Um, my grandmother actually uh, taught me how to read, um, which is crazy for me to say it, that she taught me how to read. And um, my grandmother put me into private Christian school and um, it's just been so many moments in my life that she has just been there. She was there for, with me when I purchased my first car and it's just been everything. She was there with me when me and my husband, we purchased this house that we're in right now and when she seen our house, she was just so proud of me. Um, and it's really hard to um, go through like this grieving process along with trying to be strong for my girls and, you know, being a good mother um, and everything like that. Um, I'm really happy that my grandmother is no longer in pain. And um, I know I will see her again someday. Um, but it definitely has 
been hard this um, month in particular with, with everything and um, the grieving of my grandmother. But I will say homeschooling has definitely been a positive distraction in my life. I really have been pouring into not only Brielle, but my other daughters because um, it's really important to me now just remembering all the things that my grandmother taught me. Um, and it's just, it feels good that all the things she taught me now I can teach my daughters. And um, I know if she was able to see me today, she would be so proud of me and um, everything that I'm doing for my girls. And um, yeah, so that has been a big um, life update that has happened. And I wanna thank everybody who did reach out to me um, when I expressed um, her passing away and things like that. And um, those words, they really meant a lot to me. So um, yeah, you guys. <clears throat> so as far as um, goals and things that I have for um, the rest of this school year, or not the school year, but the rest of this quarter as we're going into our second quarter, is um, goals for myself is that I want to you know be more mindful of myself and I want to be better at taking care of myself um, you guys I'm really bad at waking up before the kids actually wake up to the baby monitor of my kids being up in the morning and I really want to start taking better care of myself because I can't pour from an empty cup and I want to start waking up at least an hour before the girls so I can do my morning devotional so I can listen to my um, podcast that I love to listen to um, I really want to pour into to, um, my spirit and my heart because I know it would definitely um, it definitely will help me when I'm pouring into my kids especially in our Bible time and within our homeschool and that's definitely a, a focus that I want to focus on another goal is I want to spend more quality time with my husband I feel like ever since we have had you know our kids we have definitely um, haven't done a good job at spending that quality time together that we need to. With it coming up on the fall season, especially here in Georgia, um, I'm really excited about it. I'm excited to be able to pull out some of our favorite movies and just spend time on a couch watching movies when we put the girls to sleep and um, things like that. So that definitely is going to be a priority this second quarter. Um, just in life in general is just to carve out that special time with my husband um, and for us to uh, do those fun things that we used to do. Even just as simple as, like I said, just watching our favorite movies and you know eating snacks when the kids go to bed and things like that so um yeah um another one of my goals or whatever for homeschooling is is that I want to um be more intentional when it comes to Leia my three-year-old she actually has been doing a really good job you guys as far as her speech and language development speech therapy started back in August so she has definitely done awesome when it comes to that um but I really feel like I didn't spend as much time with her as I wanted to doing like preschooly things messy art doing all those type of things so I definitely want to put um, more emphasis on carving out that time for her, especially in the afternoons. Um, in the afternoons when they wake up from nap time, um, that is like her prime time. She's always giving me books and that's the time she wants my attention the most. And I really want to um, be intentional with uh, continuously teaching her things. Um, she definitely has flourished this first quarter. She actually has learned all of, all of her letter recognition. What's it called that? Letter recognition, yeah, that's what it's called. She's learned her re letter recognition, uh, her uppercase and her lowercase, and she actually knows all of her letter sounds fluently out of order, and um, she's doing really good with that. She's doing really good with like all the little logic puzzles. She's doing really, really good with simple math with the counting bears that I've been doing with her. So the time that I have been spending with her has been intentional and she's doing good and she's thriving, but I wanna be even more intentional with giving her that um, extra special time that she needs. Now, as far as my one-year-old Alana, she's just doing her, you know, one-year-old thing, but I do wanna, you know, be intentional with her as well, continuously reading with her, helping her develop her language and speech skills and um, continuously helping her form her vocabulary and working with her as well so that's another goal as far as youtube goes i do have some small goals for youtube is that i want to um just i guess i should say i want to be more consistent on youtube i feel like um doing two videos a week is really too much for me i feel like i've tried to do two videos a week um there it's easier for me to do two videos a week in the summertime when i'm not homeschooling but now that homeschool is in full effect i think i'm going to drop down to just doing one YouTube video a week and I hope you guys can understand that. Um, 
I really need to continuously pour into my family and into my kids. I love YouTube, I love filming, and I, this is like the best part of my day filming and creating things for you guys, but I definitely need to um, have a good balance between uh, my home life and my work life. So I think me scaling back to just one video a week will definitely work. Um, this month, I was actually only able to post one video a week, and I definitely think that that is like my good flow, my good rhythm, and um, yeah. You guys, if you have any video recommendations, just let me know, leave them down uh, below for me, and I definitely would love to do it. I know you guys are looking for to a day in a life and don't worry it might not be the next video but the video after that I will have a day in a life for you and um, I'll show you a little bit more of our ins and outs our um, daily schedule our new daily flow and how I'm managing things between uh, my nine-year-old and my two toddlers and how I'm getting all of our homeschool done and we're still able to do all the fun things that we like and we enjoy and um, everything like that so you guys um, that's my September update. That had That's really everything that has happened. Um, I'm really happy that um, even though life circumstances and, and our challenges that we faced this first quarter, I really feel like um, I'm proud of us. Um, all of my goals as far as um, where I wanted us to be at in our curriculum for the first quarter, we met them. We have done an awesome job. I'm proud of my daughter. Um, for just all the things that she's done and she's reached her goal, she's reached this um, first quarter. And I can't wait to see um, how the rest of our homeschooling year goes. I really feel like um, I'm at the point right now where I can say that I'm seeing why people love homeschooling and I'm seeing um, that joy and that spark really come to life. I feel like my first year I was just in the hustle and bustle, but now I feel like I'm, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing um, why you know, homeschooling is such a joy and um, it really means a lot to me. So you guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I really hope you enjoy seeing my September update. As always, you guys, please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing everyone in my next one. Bye.